What is up? I'm Harbert from Extra Credit Design Club, and today we are going to talk about modern tools and modern type. We all know that type comes from handwriting originally. And there are many type designers who are super gung-ho about start with the hand, but then they'll draw the letter A, you know, this big, and nobody's handwriting was ever this big. It doesn't exist. But, you know, they started analog, so hey, they're a good type designer. And there are other type designers who are obsessed with doing revivals of the old masters and finding type specimens from back in the day and recreating them. And that's all fine and good. You might say, as an industry, type design is obsessed with the past. And that's fine. But it reminds me, I cannot help but think of this stand-up bit that I once heard, and I cannot remember the comic. This was years ago. If you know, let me know in the comments. But it went something like this. He had just bought a Kindle, and he was rolling up with the Kindle, and then his pretentious friend said, hmm, oh, that's, uh, yeah, just something about a book. I just love the feel of the book, the smell of the pages, meh, meh, meh. And then someone else comes along, and they go, oh, books? Now I'm more of a chiseled stone tablet guy. Something about the weight of the stone. The indentation of the chiseled letter. And then someone else comes and they go, Oh, written word? I'm more of a Tales of the Elders type of guy. The whole thing was to highlight the ridiculousness and inconvenience of over-obsession with the past. Now, I agree there is great value in a time and a place for hearkening, even obsessing with the past, and very beautiful work has been made with this ideology. But I also think there is a time and a place for divorcing yourself to one degree or another to past conventions, just maybe entirely shrugging them off and starting with something new, focusing on what's happening now, focusing on what might be happening on the future, and use that as your primary motivation for creating type. Type design is such a niche, narrow career field that in your career of 20 years, you'll have time to do them all. You'll be able to discover what works for you. I don't think there is a right or wrong approach to type design, and I'm glad that there are so many various approaches. I would encourage any type designer to explore as wide as they can and really figure out what enables them to create their most beautiful work. But I digress. This video is about modern tools and modern types. So there has been great value in the type design industry and as a culture in shrugging off past conventions to one degree or another. If you can think of the two most popular typefaces, you're going to think of Times New Roman and Helvetica. So Helvetica and Times New Roman could be argued were both born primarily with the idea of shrugging off past conventions. Helvetica might be more easy to understand. It comes from Accidents Grotesque as a predecessor. Accidents Grotesque was called so grotesque because people saw it and they said, Ooh, it's gross. We don't like it. It's grotesque. Because at that point for three, four hundred years with printing type, serif was the norm. Sure, sans serif have existed throughout history. I'm not denying that. However, at the time and for the past hundreds of years, they were really seen as kind of a low brow thing. If you wanted to be culturally sophisticated, you were messing with serifs. But somebody decided to shirk that convention, create something that was radically new, so radical people called it grotesque, and then they owned it and they said, hey, yeah, 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 and they flexed on it so hard till it caught on, and then came digital printing or digital type, 
and it was easier to render sans serif typefaces on a digital screen for a lot of years, and they caught on even harder, and hey, modern tools, modern technologies really fueled sans serif as a whole, and the most ubiquitous sans serif is Helvetica. So there you have it. Maybe to a lesser degree, Times New Roman was primarily inspired by modern tools. The newspaper, that was the modern thing. That's how people consumed information in that day. And a newspaper said, hey, we out here, we the Times, we need a typeface that works for us. It needs to be more compressed so we can fit more words on a page. And Times New Roman was born primarily because a modern medium said, hey, we need a type that will suit us. Now, for this discussion, being around modern tools and modern type, we've spent a lot of time in the past. <laughs> like I said, you know, there's value in divorcing yourself from that, from one degree or another. Maybe not entirely in the context of this discussion. But let's talk about modern tools. What is today looking like? So I personally very rarely start my type designs with hand drawing, with anything analog. I generally am starting on a computer. And I remember, you know, back a couple years ago, we had a guest lecture from Milton Glacier, RIP, awesome designer, amazing artist, but he was talking to us that, you know, you need to learn how to use a pencil. Kids these days don't know how to use a pencil. And he was preaching it like, if you can't use a pencil, you ain't worth crap. And that's fine. But he didn't recognize that that was his approach to creating beautiful work. There are other approaches. I, as a type designer, tend to lean into modern tools. I've been drawing forms on a computer for near 20 years now, since very young, and I am just more comfortable with that medium. I'm sure when pencils first came out, the people chiseling in stone tablets were looking down their nose at people using paper and pencils, and well, you can't quite get the time it takes to really comprehend your form if you're doing it so fast with a pencil. There's arguments to be made on both sides. But <clears throat> I digress again. Let's get into modern tools. Type is primarily consumed digitally. I'm going to go out on a limb by saying the people who buy and use typefaces are going to consume typefaces primarily in a digital medium. I got no stats to back it up. I'm just assuming so. Therefore, as a type designer, does it not make sense to have the digital means of consumption be a primary driving factor behind your creation of type? Questions you might ask yourself when you are designing type is, how can new technologies, emerging technologies, take advantage of this typeface? Or better yet, X, Y, and Z are the merging new technologies. How might I create a typeface that can serve those technologies in a way that old typefaces that currently exist cannot? You might also take the same approach culturally, if you consider culture a tool. You can think what's happening to the culture of people who buy and use typefaces. The concept of the design influencer is bigger than ever. It's something that hasn't really existed in the past. So what does a typeface that serves a design influencer look like? How can I create something that can serve them in a way that type built without that consideration cannot? Another example that popped into my head just now is VR and AR. If you're wearing the dorky little thing, whatever, love it or hate it, I'm just going to say that's a new emerging technology. How might I create a typeface that serves that? 
So pretend I have, you know, my VR and I have my font right here and I'm looking right at it. And it looks very legible. But maybe as I turn my head and the font fades from the screen, maybe it not only just moves, maybe it dissolves or maybe it becomes uh, lighter weight or more condensed as I turn my head and it kind of exists on a spectrum. I'm going to have to create a variable typeface that does that. Variable typefaces are something that were not possible until very recently. Especially with the advent of AR and VR and motion graphics, I think variable typefaces are the baseline must moving forward. But that's just one idea of how modern tools, modern culture, modern uh, type creation techniques should play a part in your type design ideology. That is, if you're drinking my Kool-Aid. So just to kind of recap and hone in on this rhetoric of using modern tools to create modern typefaces, I would say as a baseline, it is so, so, so much easier, easier than ever before to create typefaces that have multiple weights and widths and different axes that can all be variable. Right? You're not having to carve these by hand in lead bricks. You're doing it on a computer, in air conditioning probably. The least you can do is make it variable as a baseline. Also, because type is mainly being consumed digitally, and especially with the advent of AR and VR and Web3, it is being consumed not only digitally, but over time. So consider when you're creating your typefaces how they might be consumed or change over time. Don't consider them as a static thing any longer. Maybe consider typefaces as something that moves and shakes and evolves over time or based on the position it is relative to the reader. Finally, I mentioned a little bit about culture as a modern tool and it shouldn't be discounted. When we were talking about Helvetica and the rise of the sans serif, technology played a big part in that. We're now at a point where rendering a serif versus sans serif on a screen is irrelevant. The resolution there is high enough on most screens where they can be rendered at the same level. So that is a new advent. So with that, we're seeing a little bit the return of the serif. Also culturally, I think we're becoming a little bit fatigued with the coldness of digital creation. For example, when you're creating something by hand, it's hard to create perfect geometry. With a computer, it's hard to create imperfect geometry. And because for so long now, young people have been raised purely in a digital world, that we're getting fatigued. And people might want to start hearkening back to a more warm, imperfect, not so geometric culture. It kind of is at odds with the medium that is mainly available. But the tools, as always, will evolve with the culture and vice versa. As a type designer, you really need to find out where is the balance that you are going to strike between cultural needs, the tools available to you, the mediums where your type will be consumed, and a really shrewd designer will be able to consider all three of those and create typefaces just using that as the baseline. Now, if you want to continue the discussion of modern tools, modern type, if you entirely disagree with me, awesome. Put it in the comments. Let's continue this conversation. Till then, I'm Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club, and as always, I'll catch you in the next.